We are live at the moment. Okay. Let's do another round. Life and Health Channel. Today, Today we, are we are privileged, as you can tell, uh, to come your way uh, with a very interesting topic, something that we all know it's important to talk about, healthcare, especially in this era of COVID and the aftermath of COVID, if COVID is uh, gone. So at this point, I have a very great person, you can tell him he's already in chat. Uh, Dr. Dr. Frank Sripo of the Ghana Medical, Medical Association, the president, president, current president of the Ghana Medical, Medical Association, and he is going to do the honors by, by talking to us, answering some questions about the state of Ghana's healthcare and uh, uh, whatever is going on that is linked to uh, the healthcare industry, the healthcare sector in Ghana. So, without wasting much time, Dr. Dr. Welcome, welcome to this big life and health. Thank you very much. Good, 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 good. Thank you. Let's... Oh, no. <laughs> you have all the info there. All right. Okay, so uh, at this point, we just want to start right off and ask, well, before we go ahead, let me just give a little background for those who don't know uh, who uh, Dr. Sribo is. Like, as, as I, I said, he is currently the president of the Ghana Medical Association. Uh, last time uh, we had a chance to talk to him, he was the vice president, and we were hoping that he would win the elections, and uh, he won in November, and as we sit here, he is the president. And uh, among the things he has achieved, and for one reason why we also want to talk to him, uh, he's practiced extensively in Ghana, with at least 21 years of practice experience on his belt. Uh, he has worked at the Confanoche Teaching Hospital, a uh, major hospital in the Ashanti region, uh, for at least 17 years. And from there, he also moved to a new district uh, hospital in the Kwai Ashanti region, where he actually is currently the medical director of uh, the hospital. So uh, he, he has also held several positions in the Ghana Medical Association until his election as uh, the current president. So if anybody knows anything about healthcare in Ghana, um, hands on, it is this man. So we are honored to have you here. And I hope that our conversation is going to be a relaxed one when, so that we can actually talk about every issue, not just healthcare. We're just going to uh, be free to talk about policy, anything that affects healthcare in Ghana. Uh, as far as time allows, you're going to touch it. So, so once again, thank you and uh, welcome. Thank you very much. All right. So, so my first, first question is, what is, what is the, the effect, effect of, of uh, uh, the the, uh, the uh, case of the economy of going, going down. down? Everybody like, thinks this stuff is uh, not going well in terms of economics, uh, finances and stuff. How has that impacted care and healthcare delivery in Ghana? Well, I think that healthcare is coming down to 
So would you say, what would you say, in, uh, with, I mean, talking about that, uh, what would you say is the state of Ghana's healthcare at the moment? Would you say it's in disarray? Would you say it's it's on a good path? What would you say in the sense? I would describe it as, uh, I mean, stable. Um, I don't think that we are in disarray. Uh, we also don't think that we are in disarray. I'm sure we did have some conversation of this nature somewhere in August, September last year when I was here. And um, clearly, you could see that there was potential for us to actually uh, go on to do greater things in the health sector. But we have not seen that. And I believe it's all to do with the fact that the economy has not been good. And then we were hoping that the Agenda 111 project that the government had actually indicated they were going to embark upon vigorously could also see some kind of uh, improvement and then hospitals should begin to spend up in various stages. We are still not seeing those hospitals coming up yet. What was the Agenda 111? Um, if, if you remember, the current government did promise that they were going to put up uh, some 101 hospitals and um, 111, so that is 111 hospitals across the country and uh, they started to make sure that accessibility to all care and become something that's uh, very, very easy for everybody who lives in those communities to go to So we're hoping that initially there was this low key condition of doing this in a year. But uh, of course, if people actually ask that we have to play this, we have to push. And as we speak, uh, we haven't seen a single hospital fully completed, even though some have started. A lot more than So it tells you that we are way far behind the schedule that uh, the government is going to, to do. But um, essentially, it tells you that this is all because of our economic situation. Of course, uh, maybe we probably can also plan properly. Because if you look at the fact that in certain areas, we are still struggling to get land to put down the hospitals. That tells you that the uh, planning was also deficient. So that is where we are. But, um, we're hoping that a lot of them have taken off and then at least some of them should have completed. And so we can say that we are on a good spiral. At that moment, we are static. We are not going down. We are not moving forward. And um, 
there are a lot of challenges that is coming up uh, recently. I'm sure you suffered some case of monkeypox here. So, so there was a scare in Ghana as well. We recorded some few cases. I think that last month there were about 13 cases of monkeypox. And when I came down here, I also heard that we have picked up cases of Malbec or virus in Ghana, and then that is also coming up. So it's, a, it's quite a challenging period that we find that most in that system. COVID cases have started rising, and so it's, uh, we are still not down to the woods yet. And so it's clear that. Um, we, we have not achieved what we say we wanted to achieve. But we are not going down. We have only a specific state. I'm just speaking in Ukraine. I don't want to speak to the negative direction. But okay. Uh, we will be able to go out and make sure that at least some players are going to have access to it. All right. So, with that being said, what do you think how many hospitals would you i know you can count at the moment but um, do you have a sense of some hospitals that are very well resourced you know in terms of equipment in terms of the manpower special specialists and and the rest that the people because you know we're having this uh, this conversation in the u.s a lot of people are trying to move down and one of the issues that people have to contend with is do I have specialists if I need to say go for colonoscopy, if I need to go for this kind of surgery, prostate surgery? Do we have some amount of hospitals or specialties that are dis well disseminated across the country that people can feel very safe, you know, and, and come back, back to Ghana? Standing the association, we will be touching on how many of the parties here. And the key thing that we are discussing from here is about the hard distribution of doctors and its effect on the best of the world. And so that tells you that the distribution of doctors across the country is a big challenge. Not even talking about specialties. So nurses are leaving, we are having a lot of nurses leaving the country. And we will in terms of specialty, we are really deficient, especially in the districts and even some of the regional hospitals. If you look at Ghana, very few hospitals you can say that in terms of manpower, you probably get the wide range of specialties that are all over, and that is um, in a current discount because the University of Ghana is a the premium hospital is for Lebu. Next, the young man who would realize that even though we do have teaching hospitals in some of the regions, Cape Coast, Botswana, um, Tispoo, and, and Tamale, and then a few private uh, teaching hospitals. The distribution of uh, special, specialists in most of these areas is very, very efficient. In terms of recruitment side, I think that most hospitals, based on their levels, are able to deliver the kind of services that they are expected to deliver. Um, I use my hospital as a case in this, where I say that as a district hospital, I think that the family is not good, it's not well resourced. And as a district hospital, they should be able to deliver up to date. And the only thing is, if you take in the teaching hospitals, they are still struggling to resource some of those teaching hospitals. And I had a conversation with one of the CEOs of the teaching hospital in Ghana, and he was telling me that some of the partners that we just talked about, we are still trying to build them with the necessary equipment and even the manpower. So that goes to when it comes to equipment and the manpower, we are very, very diligent, both in numbers and in the specialties. I see. That, that, that quenches our spirit, you know. We are all trying to mobilize and calm down now. Sometimes it makes it very difficult. 
President trying to recruit people back home, all right? All right, <laughs> all right so, so doctors out there in the U.S., I know a lot of you guys uh, who are going to be watching and those who are already watching, um, just remember that there's a call out for you now by the president of the Ghana Medical Association right now to come home uh, and contribute your quota. That's what you said, right? You should come. All yeah, right. Now, I want to, um, I mean, you made a good point that, uh, it's, it's not, not that, that bad, bad even though we, we cannot compare it to obviously, obviously advanced nations like here right, right. but, but I, I, I had a trip down to uh ghana, ghana and i came to uh your, your place i'm trying to see if i can find a video and just show people um it wasn't that bad at all In fact, uh, we started operating only um, about a year ago. So it's a very young hospital. We are still trying to produce people who do specialty programs. Uh, I think that I just want to say to them who to join us very soon. Oh, good. Though we do have some services that go on there. Now we have the same thing to join us. This is a general set. So you can imagine that if we have to be the cases, we can't fix them. They have to go. Plastic, Plastic cases, they have to go. So, so even in terms of surgery, the various specialties, the urology cases, they have to go. So, so it tells you that even at that level, we are struggling. Just mentioned only one paper, mm-hmm. that is the program. So, so, so you can think about what the surgical implants that uh, people who are coming to your mind, you realize that people who need them are saying that you are not going to be able to do it. So, you can think about what the surgical implants that people who are coming to your mind, you realize that people who are coming to your mind, you realize that people who are coming to your mind, and we have well like 50 APS in place. We don't have the manpower to be able to play by some of the surgical interventions that people are fine. We do have one obstetrician and apologist, a lady, very hard working, Dr. Yosem. And so she is struggling around and trying to support uh, the obstetrician department and supporting the medical officers to be able to deliver. So it is quite tough and difficult. And that tells you that. Ultimately, I am the only pediatrician, I double as a medical director. Mm-hmm. So you can imagine. 
So, so it, it, it starts with this game for a different setting there. And then the kind of things that we can do with that purpose. Yeah. The human person to be able to deliver the kind of approach that we need to devise the same decisions. And the interesting one, when you look at our staff moves as a difference from we have exceeded our staff moves, can you believe that? I see. So it tells you that the staff moves is a hit. It doesn't work. It's wrong. We need to look at it again. The whole thing is not right. And so because of that, sometimes you have men that are promoted and they cannot fill those promoted positions because of the fact that there's a ceiling on those um, capping on that level of um, of a level of cutting of staff. And uh, you you ask yourself what is happening. We still probably live uh, in the in the 80s. But we have moved up. By now we should open the application of grown we should know that the same time we can speech. And by now the Prime Minister of the should be stopping the parents that are coming all the way from the central region. For example, uh, the part of central region closer to the central region. All the way through to the Amansi areas to the uh, companies so that cases don't even go to companies because the potential of the is huge. We are, we are not letting it collapse. It's, it's not like we um, have yes, just thrown our hands in the sky. We are working closely with the medical school now. We are almost at the end of the medical school. We are going to have a lot of things to do. Hopefully, we will sign an agreement very soon. We've done a lot of work with uh, KMUSC Medical School. But once that agreement is signed, the Prime Minister House will, for example, become a teaching site for the medical school. And that will attract these specialties that we are talking about coming I mean, and as they teach the upper services. So, so hopefully, uh, maybe very soon, soon you will see that we're arriving in the Oh, that would be great. Because uh, your, your facility is so beautiful that um, you you have to get everything you need to make sure things work out very good. And that is All right. So, so now, now let's hit on another um area of interest. Um what, what do you, you think, think the COVID issue has done to our healthcare system uh, in Ghana. Do you think that it woke up the system to be robust for future pandemics or even other infectious diseases? And in your capacity as a GMA president, what have doctors, what do you think your colleagues, your colleague doctors have, have, have learned from this and what have you put in place to ensure that you are ready for any future uh, issues like that? So I Um, COVID also brought in this week innovation. 
mm -hmm. how do we innovate to make sure that we are also uh, reliant on ourselves in certain areas instead of relying on um, foreign uh, donors and so forth. Even in terms of planning, um, plans are far advanced. Hopefully, it will come to fruition that Ghana will also be producing vaccines. Oh, okay. In, 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 um, in collaboration with some private pharmaceutical uh, companies. And so that if you are able to do that, I foresee uh, not only the COVID vaccines being produced, but even the routine vaccines that will be the traditional vaccines like our polio, our uh, BCG, and other vaccines that we have always been given and we keep importing. Maybe we should start manufacturing them in the country. So that um, ultimately uh, we would not rely on any foreign donors or foreign support to move to ensure that our children are vaccinated. And this is all for COVID. Um, yes, it is not all good. For COVID has also brought in its way um, a lot of um, depreciation of resources because mm -hmm. a lot of the hospitals have to use several of their resources to try and combat the disease. And most of them will not reinvest for these kind of things that we That is also that uh, challenge. And of course, um, remember that uh, during the COVID era, before you guys could come to Ghana, mm -hmm. you are required to do your PCR test, and then when you get to Ghana, there's another test that's carried out. And then, before you can enter. Um, it brought in this week a lot of issues regarding uh, kind of uh, people who were even at the course and doing the testing. And so this was not um, driven by uh, government agencies, by private agencies. And some of us are questioning why we should do so. Now, so, let me let me come in there. So you want to say that, as I know I'm, at that time you were not the president, but you were the vice president of the GMA. Are you saying that you guys were not involved in the coordination of what was going on in terms of that test coming over there? Oh, really? I will not involved. That is one of the key questions that that's not just the Ghana 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 Instead of building the capacity of uh, KCCR in Kwasi, in Mabuchi, in Accra to do these things. And so these are all issues that came up. And um, there was a year scandal um, um, when these issues of the Sputnik vaccines also came up. The parliament had to invite the Minister of Health to Parliament to answer questions on the costing of the vaccines. Ghana Medical Association stayed out of this conversation uh, deliberately. Because at that time we were calling that the ideas we needed vaccines for, for people to okay? take. Mm -hmm. We wanted the country to get a vaccine so that a lot of people can be vaccinated. So we decided we will not get involved in how the vaccines come in. We just wanted because the vaccines our to focus come. was that we wanted the vaccines. And that is why we didn't see us jump into the field to make noise as to the cost of vaccines. Because we realized it wouldn't be helpful at that moment. These are questions that. We need to start looking at announcing now how come we are buying vaccines at a certain cost. That uh, was not uh, for us uh, prudent in terms of financial management, and then of course, this impact ultimately on our healthcare system. But um, so, COVID is uh, it's a mixed bag. In fact, it's a salad of um, of issues when it comes to Ghana. We have positive sides, we have negative sides, we have um, the lockdowns, the lockdowns that we experienced mm -hmm. during the COVID era, and probably contributed to Aviambi, uh, to where we are as a country at the moment. And we don't know, and of course, I don't run the books, I don't know how far that is true. And you know, all the issues that came out with even the lockdown, the kind of food that people were saying. And was it even necessary in the first place for us to even start feeding people? All those are questions that COVID has brought to the fore. So, um, COVID in Ghana is actually an issue that if you want to discuss, and um, we didn't pick each and every one, we can discuss it before. <laughs> because um, it's a mixed bag. It's, um, it's, it's actually, actually brings up emotions and other things. So of course, as health workers, we also lost colleagues. Yes, we do. COVID-related 
diseases and all that kind of complicated things. So um, it's, it's it brings out a lot of issues. Remember, there was this um, promise of health workers going to receive some kind of insurance in case they get infected or they mm-hmm. get um, um, they, they, they die from the COVID disease. And so that insurance never see the light of so light of day. There was nobody who could get the COVID insurance. We struggled, we struggled to define who a frontline health worker was during the COVID era. And that in itself became a huge problem. So, so COVID is just a mix of every single thing that we can think of. Good, the good, the bad, and the bad. And the bad. And the bad. And the bad. I see. I see. Well, now, with that, that on the way, let's, let's, see. let's see. It looks, it looks like. like um, uh, uh, we, we want, want to step out of each, in, in, in everybody's party affiliation or whatever and just discuss the truth like it is. Now, tell me, in your own estimation, what do you think were the strength of the NDC in terms of healthcare delivery and also their weakness? So you're going to say both sides. What did the NDC do better when they were in power? What and what did they do very wrong? And then, and then when we finish, finish that, we're going to do the same for the MPP. Because, because I think that, that uh, being, being a developing country, healthcare is intricately linked to the economy and to the politicians. politicians. Most of the things, private healthcare system is really very small. small. So, so most of it, healthcare is, is, um, is controlled, uh, the sector is controlled by government. What do you think? Let's start with the NDC. What did they do better and what did they do very bad? <laughs> this is a huge question anyway. I, I, I think um, um, NDC was a party that uh, was a party that, that, that essentially uh, was always talking about infrastructure. The, 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 the health uh, sector can source of some 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 now, now if you go to Rich Hospital, Rich Hospital, hospital is a state of the art hospital. It's a very, very beautiful hospital. It's uh, so liberal, but it's made by the NCC. They the invest in money because they are not by them. So they start up a company, they didn't operationalize it. They did a lot of um, building up facilities, uh, which they started, and some of them they could have completed, they could complete it, and of course, the commission and started operating. So, so there's a party that essentially was more involved in fitting up uh, health infrastructure mm-hmm. and so forth. But, but in, in that line, the, the weakness that erupted out of it was the fact that we forgot that, that the health, health infrastructure, infrastructure systems don't work on their own. That, that they don't even want to work. Like. So, so you, if you remember, it was during the NBC time that almost all the number you go to the health sector was all, were always on strike. Right. Because they, they, they didn't take the welfare of these um, uh, healthcare workers very serious. Um, it was at a point in time, as my association, Ghana Medical Council, we to on strike just to fight for simple conditions of service. So we were on strike for almost a month because we wanted some conditions of service signed. And ultimately, we did sign some conditions of service that actually quelled the strike, and then people had to go back to work. And then, so, so it tells you that, that in, as much as they were interested in building infrastructure and putting up people in the process, so that they forgot that human beings were very important in operating these hospitals and that they should have carried this piece of work along. I don't think that MPP needs something to any better when it comes to a human resource uh, needs of, of the country at the moment and how they are taking care of the health workers another uh, young case in Denmark. As we speak, uh, last year, with all the issues of rising um, economic conditions and so forth, mm-hmm. public sector workers had 4% increment in their salary. And then this year, public sector workers had 7% increment in their salary. Meanwhile, if you look at the rate of inflation at the moment, we are hoping almost around 30%. And that is the reason why I'm sure you are hearing that teachers are right. Is because of the fact that the economic conditions are right, they need something called cola. 
that is uh, of course not living allowance. Oh, that's, oh, that's what they call it, Ankola. Ankola nut. We are excited to something in terms of football or as we would normally talk about the that agreement in place was for the government to be reviewing that every six months. For one, for one year, it's not been reviewed. So, so it tells, tells you that all of them do have a blind side when it comes to the interest of people who are actually believing themselves in a way. The FDP has done well in terms of continuing projects. And that for me is what is very, very good. Because in the past, we seem to allow projects that have been established by previous government and not completed to life for and waste and before you realize it goes in rooms. But at least we can just have a testament of uh, the crime minister which the was completed by the NPP, equipped by the NPP. It's not the only hospital. Um, they have done Konongo, it's done. They've done WA, the WA regional hospital is done. They've done, completed, uh, they are almost completing the WA. So WA was started by the NPC. So which which, which, which government did the Aferi one? I saw the Aferi one was done, done by NDC. Okay. So, so that, um, yes, yes, I'm sure you see that it was a issue of the fact that it has one hundred and the movements like MCN was started or something. So people started talking about it. But I will say that, all you know, both of them have done some bit in terms of infrastructure. Because continuing infrastructure is not an easy thing to do, especially the fact that you will always be reminded that your opponent will always be sitting But when the other party started it, and you didn't start it, and yet it came to complete it. So, but they have started doing certain things, a few of them. Um, half of it was managed, like I said, in larger parts, as a credit to a government. And you know, certain more decisions had to be taken. And so for me, I'll give them a class on that front. Uh, that's at least they were able to continue the number of cases that we had in the country. Even though, like I indicated to you, it's uh, an issue of uh, the mixed bag, um, of the um, salad of all kinds of issues. But so both of them have had their strengths. But I think in terms of human resource management, that is where they are looking at right. Both of them lack the weakness in terms of human resource. Now, you that basically in the on the human resource aspect, you only mention conditions of service and you know pay increases and stuff. Uh, is there any training? Okay. Training is a key. I mean, whether you like it or not, you remember your initial question is to do with the specialties. Okay. So, so we have to be able to identify the areas that we need to train people in and make people who can train them available to train them. Um, we, we are still, even though the, um, the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons is doing its best, there are still areas that we need to expand. Um, we, we, as Ghana Medical Association, we have introduced a sample of an agreement with a pharmaceutical company, Roche. Pharmaceutical company and, and Rush, Rush uh, the agreement is such that, that you should be able to get the treatment in medical oncology. Okay, you see, what we have in Ghana now currently is with the medical oncology, we don't have medical oncologists, so we need medical oncologists, and that is a specialty that is lacking. Something that we are looking at trying to see if that there's some people to train in those areas so that we can have that kind of specialty also available in Ghana. So in terms of training, there is still a joining gap that needs to be filled. And then it comes across almost all the specialties. And so, so um, and then there are new and emerging areas that we need to also look at. So, so it's, it's quite interesting that um, interventional radiology, very few people that are trained in interventional radiology. So, so um, if you happen to find yourself in a place where you may need such services, the probability is that you are going to die before you get to a crowd okay. and anywhere close to receiving such 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 care. So, so we, we still have a gap when it comes to training. And then I just hope that subsequent governments and then any other subsequent governments will look at the issues of training. Especially even with this agenda of building the success and respect in the course and regions, mm -hmm. we need to train people to be able to deliver the kind of services that you need to deliver. These are not just going to be general practitioners, but people who have the skills to do their writings. So, um, 
it was still like us. As you see, it's a big, big gap that has to be built, and both governments, both NDC and with Big Bang, are struggling. We think they will be coming up to expectation now in the future. Okay, so are uh, you? Basically, we can pick a winner here. So everybody has their own weak weakness. The reason why I say that in natural process is that that that, that is supposed to be a continuum. Okay. So right. So one starts and one has to finish. One starts and one has to finish. It should be a continuous process. It's just yeah. that sometimes we get too petty. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, then what happens, what happens is that we begin to, to look at it from a lot of time and so forth. Because, strictly speaking, if you look at what you have promised us, that means what is being delivered currently. A lot of us are disappointed in a way. Uh, because we felt that this was a government that had come with so much expectation, and yet, either by dint of bad luck or by dint of self strong bottoms that were pressed, we don't know which is which. We have not been able to deliver to the expectation that we were expected to be. And as we speak currently, we know that we are in the decisions with the International Monetary Fund, IMF, on some bailouts. So, we pick winners and losers because <laughs> NBC took us into IMF and exited proudly. And we are back in there. So, yeah, yeah, I was watching so, the. Uh, it's only, it's it's only, it's it's it feels like, like um, we, we don't, don't learn and we keep going back to the same mistakes that we so, so I don't, I don't think, think really for me at this moment when it comes to the health sector, you can really pick you see that this one is a win at this end as well. But for me, governance is a continuous process. You should expect our governments to continue to invest. That has started. That has started. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now let me ask you so, what do you, especially in your capacity as a president of the you are talking not just for yourself, but for your colleague, uh, doctors who are uh, you head. What do you expect from government, regardless of what and and they are, whether NPP or NDC? What what do you want them to put in place so that it becomes like pen, whether it's NDC, NPP, or N whatever? As long as this government is there, I know doctors are going to get this. And this is what we need to to project our image uh, as, as a healthcare uh, sector in, in Ghana. What do you expect of them? You know, you know there was a time that we were not to that. Yes. Strong institutions. We did take it for granted. Because clearly, at this moment, it tells you that we don't need strong people, we need strong institutions. And for me, my expectation is that the government put in place strong institutions as to exactly what we have to do or where we are heading to in the South Center as a, as a, as a, as a, as a country. Mm -hmm. We should be asking ourselves where do we want to get to in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, in the next 30 years, in the next 50 years. And then, and then what, what are the processes that we need to lock in to make sure that we follow, follow the processes? We, we, I was just talking to you about reviewing of even our NHIA tariffs mm -hmm. in terms of the NHIA. And we, it took us so long, so, so, so many years, since 2014. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? That's since 2014, and you are expecting people to get the benefit, benefit of national health insurance. It won't happen. It won't happen. It won't happen. So 2014 to 2022. Such that every year, for every two years, we are going to review our NHIS policy. Where we have to add, we add, where we have to trust, we trust. What is, what is our, is our policy, policy in place to equip the hospitals? hospitals. And we continuously retrieve these hospitals. We need what an efficient equipment. Not, not that, that once you are given an equipment today, that's the end of it. So nobody says it. Whether the equipment are maintained or they are not maintained, and what happens to them when they go out of fashion, as you are supposed to equip. There should be a system in place such that. And I'll come to blow my mind that every five years, hospitals are looked at. Those, those ones that need retooling are retooled. Every two years, years hospitals are assessed to see where the deficiency lies, where we're we we feeling. And my expectation is to start being on a deliberate policy as to how we will push people into those areas. So, 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 so,
because what we need to be able to give an efficient quality of life to the people. And so we put in plans to do so. What are plans to ensure that our nurses who are living, they are able to stop the, the brain drain, not, not stopping it by putting in place some kind of draconian policy that does not benefit the worker, but simply benefits the country. Can you should to look at why they are living. There's economic reasons. Can you offer something that is even close to what people are offering out there? It should be possible. But if, if we are just, just working on and all, all we do is that, that we, we just, just allow, allow the system to run as an autopilot, we won't get anywhere. So, so my expectation is, 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 is for, for me as, as a president of the Ghana Minister Association, I expect that in the next couple of years, we should, we should see one, these hospitals, hospitals are well equipped, the equipment are well maintained, the mm-hmm. equipment are plans as to how these equipment should be maintained, and it should, it should also be a system to ensure that people are tested to this areas and they are motivated to stay. We were working on something called the deprived area incentive allowances. It will fascinate you to know that the essence of it was just to make sure that we get people to the assessed places. Mm-hmm. Such that people will not be only limited to stay in the massive and the big cities. But we would to go to the deprived areas to serve them. So let's have to go along with some form of Incentive to be able to get them there. We started a discussion. The discussion had to take some several to some to the extent that even some kind of um, a recent half with that. Immediately we finished it. Everybody was going to see it. Mm-hmm. They don't, they don't want, want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. So, so how do you attract and retain people to these requirements? Mm-hmm. So there should be a delivery policy. And, and that is what um, we all that is what That is what you all expect. As an association, it's not like we force our arms and we are not doing anything. We are trying our best, we are talking to people, we are not talking about being involved in actually convincing people why we should accept some posting to rural areas. And during my tenure, I think that we've had about um, two major um, webinars to try and educate doctors as to the need for them to accept postings to the five areas and, and even the advantages even though some of the advantages that we talked about uh, it's quite funny it's just have to talk about when, when you go there the, the, the cost of living is a little bit lower so you will be receiving the same salary as in a car of mercy but the cost, the cost of living is lower you save more you save more and so forth that the question that comes up is that okay i save more but the schools there are not good enough and i have to send my children back to the school in the city and i have to pay more and sometimes, and sometimes you need to commute between those things who takes care of that kind of uh, expenditure. So that is the reason why we're hoping that some form of the private design centers can come to support. I am working um, with some benevolent Ghanaians and we I'm almost through with a deal. Hopefully when I get back to Ghana, I'm sure that um, it will go through for us to get some incubators for example get some sort of traffic machine for example so that we can distribute them to some deprived hospitals so that at least the babies who are born pretend can have the benefit of this intelligence and survive and then of course john this which is one of the most dangerous uh, killers of our uh, babies in ghana and damaging their brains and so forth we can also help get it by providing some sort of traffic machines and that is what some of the things that are going to be trying to do but the bigger responsibility lies on the shoulders of governments and there should be clear plans. And I think that um, if we are able to do that as a country and we put in plans, we remember we talked about agenda one one. Yes. Nobody is talking about plans as to how human beings will be sent to these hospitals once they come on board. We are only talking about infrastructure. You can have a beautiful infrastructure in place and yet you won't be operational because the human resources will not be there. Not be there. So, so you need to plan alongside. You don't leave it to chance. If your, your plan is that in six years you will finish it, you should, you should also have, have a consistent plan set that in six years you have this caliber of workers who are going to be posted to these places to work. And I think, and I think those, those are the kind of things you should be doing. Our plans should be holistic. It should be such that it's worth work out. And not just build the hospitals and hospitals are available. Nobody is there because they can't come themselves. Because at the end of the day, if 
the patients go there, they don't get the people who can, can give them the quality of care. So they won't go again. Mm-hmm. So regardless of how good home they are, they cannot afford it. They won't, they won't go, go, go again. again. And then they become come 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 um, more or less abandoned places. This is the point that is possible to contend with. All right, now let's come to uh, the issue of uh, uh, politics, politics, corruption, corruption and, and healthcare. Um, so, so let's tackle corruption, corruption in, 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 in politics, politics and then, and then uh, down, uh, down to healthcare. healthcare. Now, now, I was asking around, around uh, um, with, with this, this example, example when, when I traveled, I traveled down, down to Ghana, Ghana uh, during, uh, during the COVID, COVID era, where, where you, you had to get a, get a test, test right, right there. there. I had to do, do a test here, here make, sure make sure it was negative, and then, and then right as I get off the airplane over in Ghana, Ghana I had, I had to, to also do another test where I was, where I was charged. charged. I think about hundred dollars or something. And I, and I saw, saw the line and people who were getting the test. test. I'm like, woo! If all, all these people are getting charged a hundred bucks a piece, I'm not talking about hundred Ghana cedis, hundred dollars a piece. I don't, I don't remember, remember the exact amount. amount. If, all if all these people, people are being charged, then the government is going to get enough money to erect in one building, kind of like the ones we have in Kolibu and the rest. And then I asked them and found out that that was a private company. Uh, uh, what is, what going, is going on? on? Is, 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 is there, there uh, is the government, government just giving up and, up and uh, letting uh, everybody loot and, and you know, you know just, just do anything, anything they want? Because, because as, as, as I'm saying, it's good. It's good. I mean, I mean I don't, don't, don't think of, think of uh, me as, as being, being the person who wants to have the government in charge of everything. It's good. You know the economics, you know, you have to have diversified companies and stuff. But when it comes to Ghana, we are not at the place where uh, an individual company should, should be led, led to, to do everything and something, something that has that much money, money coming in as it was. It was. Now, now, I don't, I don't know, know, I don't, I don't, I don't live in, in Ghana, I so I can't say it was a corrupt, corrupt practice, but it was it sort of funny to me that the government was involved in terms of the delivery of that. Now, with that being said, you can correct me if I'm wrong, how is corruption affecting the healthcare system and healthcare sector in Ghana. In Ghana. I know I your know position as a president, you may, but please, for our six days of the you know, you want to know what's going on. You know, interestingly, it's, uh, it's, it's not only uh, US here, it's a global village, and I can uh-huh. tell you that uh-huh. people are probably in Ghana, I know what you mentioned this thing, and so, so and now you can go and sit in the way, we're only speaking to people, we're only Yes, yes, I I think we're going to get to the fact that uh, one, one of the boring things that we're going to do is that we're going to have one point to the citizens. The private private company was responsible for the business that the private company had And for some of us, it was more of a slap in the face. Because when COVID came, the first institutions that were able to do the tests, and all of us were rushing and sending samples to them to do the test was the Uruguchi, and then the cases here again yesterday. So if for nothing at all, we, we could have resourced these two agencies to make sure that they carry out those tests in the particular international airport to the benefit of the country. Because that's the case now. Um, I would say, say that people have made money out of us, and then mm. they have taken their money away. Because they don't know the kind of contracts that they signed between them and government. But so, so uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't the best option. Somebody, somebody just posted a comment, comment, comment I should spare you because you are not involved. But I'm going to ask as a follow up as a president of the GMA were you guys consulted at all in terms of the planning? So, at the point in time, GMA had to raise issues. That's happening. Uh, um, we didn't, we didn't get, get some finances. But, but let me say that corruption in Ghana affects every facet of the country. And then healthcare is not much insulated when there is corruption. Definitely, it is very difficult to prove corruption. You know, it's always a perception. Because um, I don't, I don't think, think that, that anybody, anybody has been, been able to catch, catch somebody to say that the person is actually stealing money. But sometimes you see, you you can perceive, perceive that this is what is going on, and yet, and yet you have, have no evidence to prove that that's precisely what is happening. 
But, but there are always, always uh, an angle to it. And then you, you can fix signals, signals to know that things, things are not going the way they have to go because of some part of corruption practices that are happening here and there. And I indicated to you in terms of even the issues of how some of these contracts are awarded. We don't know. Again, nobody knew how frontiers came to be. And they were there. So, was that the price practices? Maybe yes, maybe no. Yes, we don't know um, how they got there. But the point is that clearly, in, if it wasn't a corruption, then it was uh, an issue of um, an inept decision that was taken. It was a very bad decision that was taken. And you, and you would think that something as serious as that, all the all stakeholders should have been involved. In the health sector, sector, we still, we still do have option, right, right from the, the smallest person in the hospital, hospital to the highest person, person through to whatever to the level of the ministry that you can think of. And, and um, we, we always, always think, think that corruption is just the bigger, bigger things. But if you sit in a hospital, as if you were in America, and somebody comes into the hospital, and they take the money from that person without receipting, mm. um, without any justification. That is corruption, and that is how it starts. You deny, you deny the hospital of uh, the kind of resources or the finances that they get to be able to uh, make sure that at least the patients come in are well taken care of. You would think that you have not committed any corruption. That is corruption. Procurement um, issues. How do we do our procurements? Do we do it genuinely? Do we do it based on some kind of uh, backpack, passing? And those are issues that we need to deal with. How does the government sign contracts to build hospitals? You mean this agenda 111, 101, 111 hospitals that we are building? Are the contracts transparent? If you ask me as president of Ghana Medical Council, I have no idea what is in those contracts. Really? And you are the president of the doctor's association? A good friend of mine is asking a question. Let me just throw that in. He's saying that how is the national health insurance working? Are hospitals and practitioners being reimbursed appropriately? The appropriateness of reimbursement, no. The timing of reimbursement, no. Because as I speak, I think that the last reimbursement was for October last year. We are already in July, is it? Yes. Yes. October last year. And nothing has been disbursed since. The last payment that was done. So they paid up to October 2021. Sometimes out of pocket. Because we cannot rely solely on the national health insurance. It's not possible. 
Wow. Oh, that's, so that's 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 sad. That's sad. I mean, I mean it's, 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 it's yeah. yeah. It's it's, it's, it's good, good at least, least you have something going, going, going but, but I don't know why we can set up some beautiful programs and then they just sit and rot. You know, it's it's like uh I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's just the name, name of the program, program is good, good enough for us. But we don't. We don't uh, was there was something that this lady said, 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 said today. She said, said that there's even you can apply the knowledge and then execution, execution of the knowledge. If you have the knowledge and you haven't executed, I mean, there's no need for the knowledge. If we have made the laws and you can plan and execute, what is the sense of the insurance scheme if we can pay people? I mean, I mean, we, I mean, we, we really, really want, want to call, call it speed, 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 and not speed. 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 That, that is why I am doing that. So sometimes, sometimes it's very really difficult for us to talk about it, especially, it. especially for me being a manager. Because, 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 because when you talk about, about it like this, the uh, lenses, lenses of course, and everybody <laughs> focuses on you. The next, the next thing you realize, realize is that somebody is moving to get you, get you out, out of jobs. Job. So, 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 so there are times when people, people want to want speak, speak, but they, they are not, not in the position to speak because they think that they will be victimized. So, so, so they would swallow, swallow what, they what they are thinking, so or swallow what they see. Well, well maybe, maybe for me, as the, of course, I'm the president of the Ghana Medical Association, I can speak as it really. I think that there's a reason why they tell you that. Co payment is something that is going on. We have to do it. It's absolutely born out of necessity. Out of necessity. Because they don't have money to run. Well, how would they? Mm -hmm. Because there was supposed to be a sense of the place that they are going to Every, Every time, time the insurance lay, they be in arrears for three months. Okay, that would, that would have meant that. This is speaking by now. Uh, um, all the hospitals should have received up to, up to the month of uh, uh, the April. 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 Mm, that means okay. you get it. So that, so that you know you know that you get April by now. By now you should have received April. And next, and next month you'll be receiving uh, uh, what, do you what do you call it? June. Oh, uh, May. 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 So, so what would have happened in the last almost every month that would have the money coming in from national health insurance to support the health care system. And by so doing, if you give realistic rates and you are not advocating a hospital, you have to charge patients. Then you are right. I want you can go high for several months because we are spent as to run without giving them. And the payment is not even at realistic rates. Interestingly, even drugs that are bought from governments by the facilities. Sometimes, Sometimes, if you compare the, 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 the price, price of those drugs as against what the national health insurance is paying you, the deficiency. And that would be more expensive than what the national health insurance is paying. That, what, 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 is paying. Yes, that, that means that somebody has to pay the difference. The difference. And who is that somebody? It's the patient. So, so there are challenges, challenges. And, and that is the reason why, why if you, you are home and you think that your uh, uh, mother is, is, is home, home, your father is home, or your mom is home, and you say, so I'm going to send money. So please bring the money back. I see. I see. Now, now would you, you uh, that, was uh, that was a good question, question Benjamin. Uh, uh, would, you would you say that, that we should probably begin, begin, to, begin to move towards a co pay system, system rather than, than just a blanket so, 100%? So, 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 we should be grants and we should be more pain pain. We should not play the odds. Because the odds are not going to be there. Let us indicate that there is a room for co pay. Government, national health insurance, to meet up to this point, beyond this point, you will have to pay out of pocket. So that, so that even if people need to pick, pick up private insurance to cover, cover the difference, they will pick it up so that the, so that the difference is covered. Otherwise, Otherwise, this kind of game that we are playing, pretending as if we are, we are doing, doing everything for the people, yes. and yet not, not doing so, it's, it's deception. Well, well, on, on the flip side, side though, uh, recently, uh, recently um, I'm going to deviate a little bit, bit but I think it's in line. I believe that it's all also linked to the revenue situation of the government, 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 government right? Yeah, yeah. Now, recently, now, recently, I had a debate, debate about, about uh, the, government uh, the government trying to raise uh, money, revenue, revenue using the tariffs on uh, electronic, electronic money, money transfers. And, and the Ghanaians say, no, don't you think if we accept some of these things, that would actually... Uh, sort of boost, boost the government's, government's revenue system and be able to pay for some of these because, because you know we're paying, paying for uh, free edge instances. I mean, nothing in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
uh, I have my have best form of me now. I have been able to know you can that kind of thing can get into the becoming the front, front, front banner of this discussion. But, but let me let me just, just say this. You see, you see the electronic payment system, system for me, for me uh, the, the government indicated to us was to us and that's next. If, if anybody works in the former sector, that person is ready for the penal process. I can tell you I'm feeling a lot of taxes. So if, so you, if are you are asking me to also, also join, join those, those who do not pay taxes, what they pay again another in another electronic like it's, 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 it's a disincentive. Yes, so, I so I always speak well, well of it. Because, because the point, the point is, is that, that I pay, I pay my taxes, I have not overspent the money you pay me. Mm-hmm. So, so you are asking me to pay another of my the same money. money. And this, and this is the analogy that I use. I, use. I, say, I that say that I've been paid. I put, I put, the, put the, money the money on my electronic wallet. In the same, same money that, that I put on my electronic wallet, I sent, I sent to my mom. mom. And yet, and yet I have to pay another tax on it. And when she spends it, she also pays another tax on it. So the taxation effect becomes some kind of a cascading effect. It's a more of like a nuclear weapon that has been somehow. If you see money, money go round round, and they don't buy buys in the end up. Finish, finish. And that is well, I think it's that is a problem with this day in the I believe that if the government has the investment, one started with small, that's the first thing. So that we can set up and then the systems are put in place to ensure that we're already paying taxes. Some are exempted. Becomes very beneficial. Let me also go to the other side of it the cashless society. Ghana, Ghana, at the point, point in time, is so much reliant on physical cash, physical cash. To the extent that, that, especially our traders, they always, they always have to carry cash, cash in bulk, bulk and travel with the cash, and it comes to the cash, 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 cash and so forth. With these electronic systems coming into play, a lot of them started using these platforms as a way of carrying their money. And that reduced the tax in them. And in actual fact, if I'm I'm not afraid, probably it reduces the printing of currency. currency. And that in itself is 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 of benefit benefit to the country. Right. So So I, for me personally, personally, would have believed that we should have found innovative ways of one, making making sure that we are already paying taxes and not paying the taxes. But how are you going to do that though? Because everybody. Former sector, yeah. Actually, link Ghana card to my payroll, and that is that is done. My Ghana card is linked to my payroll. Okay. My Ghana card is linked to my phone number. Oh yes, and I'm sure you heard recently without some numbers were supposed to be out of commission because you don't have Ghana card, you can't register. So you link your Ghana card to your phone number. You don't, you don't give your Ghana to your, to your pay structure. And so, and so you have, have my details. Immediately, I say anything. These systems, if they are talking to each other, clearly, you know why. You know why you and, and, and recently, recent banks have even indicated that the only this thing that they will accept, I declare that they will accept, is the Ghana card, card. Which, which means that they have to link it to your accounts. Right. So if I spend on my own, all, All these things they are talking to each other, they know, they know I'm already in the former sector and paying my taxes. If I'm not, it, it is clear, it is there. And then you have to find a way, way to make sure, to make sure, that, make sure that, that you don't spend your money. You get it. Because, because otherwise, otherwise, that probably will come and have a new for those who are not in the former sector, sector to use those who are in the former sector to, to, to transfer. Immediately, you spend more than you earn. The system fixes it, like that like everything you are earning or spending are taxed. So, so you put, put some of your account on the system. So, this just requires some hard work. That needs to be done. But we didn't do that hard work. We just took the blanket and saying that. No, on the flip, in fact, I want to be a pushback. Then I'll push back a little bit. You, 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 you finish your thoughts. Yes. yes. Let me also say, say that even the percentage that we started at this, for me, it was, was GDP. Uh, that's what I was going to so ask. How much was the percent? 1.5%. Okay. That, that, that is huge. And it is not happening. Any amount you spend 
P P one point five percent. That was high. So, so you it's not just small, small people. We need to set it and gradually, gradually you get the increase it gradually. It, it, you, you, and we put in system in systems in place to ensure that at least people who are not able to pay taxes are not burdened. Because we are not even paying taxes. It's a bit and it's a gap because there are a lot of consumption of taxes. Everybody pays VAT. If you buy from world you get taxes. If you go to the shops to to buy to buy this you pay taxes. If you go to the restaurant to eat you pay taxes. So so even the people that we see they don't pay taxes. That is the format tax. But in terms of consumption tax, they are paying taxes. If you if you import you you pay so so you look at the return of taxes on the oh, yeah. So, so in our case this is just one of the taxes to come that that for me, for me is the way that, way that if we have to continue it and we have to have to look at it basically just in terms of expanding that means it's a it's acceptability more and more what we are seeing today yes sir my pushback was about um the talking, talking about, about the fact that former sector employees are already yeah. high taxed that's, that's the same, same here we are also, we are also uh, the, uh, the former, former sector, sector is already high taxed, high taxed. but when you go to the grocery stores and you're going to buy, buy you are hit you with your 6.5 or 7 percent tax yeah. yeah that everybody pays so, so that, that one, one i don't know we are also paying the same thing we are paying the consumption taxes we are paying the Former taxes, and then this one comes in, and this is a direct tax on the money. That is one thing that we should actually take into consideration. This is not consumption. This is a direct tax. So even you are not paying direct taxes, you still have to pay direct taxes for the same money. It doesn't add up. There is a need for for ways and means to be sought to make people who pay taxes from from this kind of taxes. Where is the direct tax? It has, it has got nothing to do with the same money, money once, it's once it's in place as taxed. And, 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 and that is the danger. Let me give an answer to this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My, my younger, younger brother sent me money, money that, that I should use the money to buy something for uh, one of our aunties. Within 30 minutes, he called me back that my auntie says she doesn't want she wanted to buy, so she bring the money to her. So she sent me back the money. So, so I can't think that. that. So, so we pay that in levy. Because, because I am just there, there and I have sent my money. Mm-hmm. I, haven't I haven't spent, spent I haven't done anything, and I'm just there. And now you've sent me $500 to ask him to send me back to $500. Which means, Which means that if you have to send him back $500 to be direct, I, who is sitting by somewhere, will have to bear the cost. The cost. cost. I so I told him I'm not going to do that. So if you want to do that, then you can do that. So I didn't tell him from this and I send it to him. It means, it means that, that he has lost job, job twice. The same money 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 if, if we, we are not careful, careful we, we always be going, going, going for easy easy targets. targets. Easy easy targets. targets. But it targets, targets, targets sometimes, sometimes come back and ban our kids. That is what, what we have to come. People are finding ways and means of avoiding it. Avoiding it, yeah. Yes. And, and if I have the opportunity, opportunity I'll avoid it. Because, because why should I be paying the same amount of money and I have not been doing anything within a short period of time? That same money is taxing it. I hear, I hear your point about being direct. Uh, it hasn't done anything to take a source. When you already pay direct taxes on your income. Yeah. yeah. Even, like, like you say, if they have even done anything like 0.5%, it might probably be so small that you would have just let go. Yeah. And that's why people also have to see that. Exactly. 
Because people are doing so many taxes in the road leading to their homes are so terrible. Plus, Plus uh, they can't, they can't get even get home when it rains. Schools are in the situations. situations. Yeah, we're not seeing the right now, now ta- I was talking, talking about, about the roads. When I came to Ghana last year, year. Uh, and I went, I went to a few places. I'm going to show a quick video. video. Uh, let's, uh, see. let's see. Uh, uh, we were... Taxes are not good because at the end of the day, taxes don't actually are used in building countries. And I, I see your vehicle rules and whatever, you know, it's taxes are there. But, but I was looking that there should, should, should be realistic taxes so that people are not competing with the situation, especially so. And I want to put taxation for more of the same money. All right. Now, now let's, let's come back, back to our uh, concluding uh, remarks. We're going to uh, ask about. about uh, um, what, what are, are your expectations, expectations for the coming year, year as the president of the GMA? You have you are not even been a year yet, right? right? And, and uh, we, we believe, believe you have goals and aspirations. And aspirations. What, what are some of your expectations? And then, and then after, after that, that question, question uh, the other question, question would be: What would, what you, would you do differently from your predecessors uh, at the GMA so that we can hold you to task when your office runs out? I am also always going to get into the agriculture in the regions that has transition between the effects the sky infrastructure to house at least offices and also to put avenues for doctors who want to relax, go there to have those kind of things to sit and send also so it's one day and we are looking at being able to achieve and so hopefully by next year this one should start 
and we do have um, one plant sitting at um, the, the end of the clay for home area. We are hoping to be able to deliver uh, a huge edifice on that land. And it's something that I'm working with seriously as. Uh, even as I'm here on Thursday, there are meetings going on, trying to engage some investors to see if they can invest in those areas so that we can put up an edifice that is big enough to the Canada Medical Association. Um, what I might do differently from my predecessors, yes. Yeah. Well, um, I think that Ghana Medical Association is a very big organization, we have structures in place, uh, so each and every one of us, as leaders of the association, do have our focus. Uh, my focus is to seek to the welfare of my people and also do these kind of infrastructure that we talk about. By your people, you mean your doctors that doctors you work with? And so it is my major focus. Others may have had their focus somewhere else, they have achieved their mandates and they are gone. So for me, it's more of what I want to do. And I'm not thinking of anybody, I'm not thinking of what they did. Um, I want to do something different from what they did. I have my own ideas and I have my own way of wanting to do things. That is how I intend to go. Even though lessons are always learned, especially when they fall back, and where they didn't do what is right, we tend to right the wrongs and do what is right. And um, I think that is basically what I, I think I want to do. And I'm sure one day people will also learn from my mistakes and my wrongs, and they will also soon be better. Because the system that we are building, and hopefully we should get to a point where they say we have reached. But for now, GMA is so, so good. We need to work to build up. That's a that's a very humble uh, suggestion, there. and uh, that's a very smart person who talks humbly. And you, you have I'm shown you are wise. Um, before we wrap up, though, I want to give you this chance to uh, talk to your viewers. A lot of people are going to watch this video later. What would you want to tell people, doctors here in the U.S., doctors in the diaspora? And what you expect from them as a resident doctor, um, you know, president of the GME, what would you tell them? What, 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 what you want? I have to tell them is very simple. Um, Ghana is still in the home. So um, at any point in time, they should uh, turn back and be mad. And as much as you need that, you have to come back physically. But if there is anything you think you want to do to help support the health care system in Ghana, then reach out to us. And then let's see how this can help you so that at the end day you don't get frustrated when you come into the system. But at least you can support and show you that you're interested in the system. Support from give back to that. And interestingly, the footballers are doing well because even for those who have gone outside the country and yeah, so forth, they are going back to support the black stars or the black stars. So, so let's also do the same. The other sector. Even those who are not into that, and let's look at they should give back and support that you may not have any other living Ghana doing this much. At least that is where you come from. Um, recently, the government launched uh, something we call Homecoming. Homecoming? Yes. So okay. I think that there's also a call for Homecoming. That is what I would say. If you don't come to this country, let something come home. <laughs> <laughs> but when we bring something home, they will. Yeah. You know, he's going to squander yeah. everything. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's really his football. Those of us outside here, even more, trust me. And uh, I'm surprised that people aren't complaining, but um, hopefully uh, we'll find a way, like, um, we'll get back, like you're saying. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, such a wonderful time of discussion. We hope to talk to you again before you leave, and uh, uh, hopefully sometime within the week we'll have another uh, conversation. Uh, but, but until then, then uh, we want to thank those uh, who tuned in to watch and uh, those who, the, uh, wonderful, wonderful comments and, and questions. That was nice. And uh, those, those who are going to watch in the future, if you still have questions or comments, don't forget to post them on the comment section and uh, we'll be able to look at them and uh, respond when necessary. But uh, this is where we draw the curtains for now, Dr. Frank Sribo of the GMA president, thank you so much uh, once again. And 
Uh, we'll we'll see, see you again as soon as we can. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you. God bless you. <laughs>